You know, I am really beginning to despise. To despise something is to have uh, is greater than to have just mere hatred. By the way, I am beginning to despise the new normal. I really am. I really am. I I sometimes pray. It's like, Lord, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Can you? But I don't have permission yet. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah, the, the the new normal. The new normal. You young you youngins out there. You mind now what you put in that body of yours. You mind now what you do. Because, now granted, I'm only 49 years of age. If you make it to this age, um, it, it adds up. <laughs> it adds up. You know, so you youngins out there, you, you, you mind your P's and Q's. Watch what you eat how you eat, watch what you do in your younger days. Because as the scripture saith in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, this, this is a truth that uh, those of us who lived a life of sin before the Lord saved us, okay, and did incredible abuse to the body that you have been given, you have to remember, you youngins, verses 9 and 10 from Ecclesiastes. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. So rare when a child, I say to you, child, obviously before the age of accountability, whatever that is, um, not necessarily talking about that, um, anywhere between mid-teens, early teens to mid to later 20s even, okay, all right, but it's rare when child, a youth, can genuinely, it, it, it happens, yes it does, but it's very rare when that does, it does happen, yes it does, why is that rare, because of that, because of that, be, 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 because of this, <laughs> because of this, okay, because of this, uh, that, that kind of stuff. People nowadays are, are taught self-glorification in a way that is so vomitous. But, if it feels good, do it, right there, kid? Hmm? Feels good, do it. You only live once. That's a, that's a lie. It's a lie, son. Oh, you will only live once in this sagging skin suit down here on earth. Yes, you, that is true. That is true. But see, your spirit and soul are eternal. And after you leave this, you're going to be in one of two places. You're either going to be in heaven or you're either going to be in hell. There's no option C. Okay? All right? This you only live once thing is a grotesque satanic lie and it's used as a license for people to sin enjoy so young man in thy youth and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes but know thou thou is singular you, okay? That for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. Action, reaction. 
consequence. A lot of mankind and a lot of Christianity want to skirt the consequence only when it is of benefit to their financial pocketbook or to their own reproductive freedom. Grotesque. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. And yet it is childhood and youth that are glorified today, isn't it? Isn't it? In Second Peter chapter 3, hmm, verses 3 and 4, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Nothing's changed, except man's getting worse. Where's the promise of your God, huh? In Jude, Jude verses 17 on verse 19, Jude does not have chapters. Jude 17 on the 19. Hmm. But beloved, remember ye, ye is plural, more than one, the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. Mm. Mockers. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Verses 8 and 9. The wisdom of the prudent. Wisdom. Which is the fear of the Lord. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. Number one, his way. How do you understand the Lord's way? The scriptures. Another fold, uh, another edge to that sword is to that you understand that the way you are going without the Lord is sin, deadly and dangerous. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. But the folly of fools who say in their heart there is no God is deceit. Fools who say in their heart there is no God make a mock at sin. But among the righteous there is favor. And grace simply defined is unmerited, unmerited favor from the better blessing the lesser. Okay, that, that's simplified. As simple as you can put it. Okay? So, fools make a mock at sin. Fools who say in their heart, there is no doubt. <laughs> These be they who separate themselves Holier than thou. Oh, and Christianity is rife with it. A lot of people say that of us saints. You know. Oh, the attacks. <laughs> oh, oh, you think you're special because you're a King James Bible believer. I don't call myself that, thank you very little. Okay? Alright? I do not call myself that. <laughs> I do not uh, I do not affix myself onto that term whatsoever. Okay? I'm a saint of the Church of God who believe in the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? There's a difference. There is a big, big difference. 
These are they who separate themselves. Sensual. Led by your senses. Feels good, do it. The lust of the eyes. The pride of life. The lust of the flesh. That kind of stuff. John talks about that in 1 John chapter 2. Sensual. And the wisdom that is of this earth is what? First, earthly, sensual, devilish. Earthly, sensual, and devilish. The wisdom of this world. Earthly. Dirt. Of man. Sensual. Led of the senses. And who is the one who is promulgating that? Oh, that'd be the devil. Devilish. And you look at this Christianity, okay, you tell me, go ahead, tell me, is not Christianity sensual? Hmm? Even the King James Bible believing Christians, are they not sensual? Don't, don't do this, just, just an example. Go to one of their videos and leave a comment um, questioning and trying to, like, hey, maybe they're, oh, look at how the sensual Christians will come to the aid. There's nothing wrong with sticking up for a friend. Not wrong with sticking up for a friend. Not wrong with that whatsoever. But um, are these people actually your friends? Please. Please, come on. These be they who separate themselves. Sensual. And if you're sensual, led by your senses, what having not the capital S spirit, not having the Lord. Now the argument is right away, what? Well, we all make mistakes. Yes, we do. But we who are saints, we do not live in that, as does the false convert. And then when they go to the sensual thing, that, their senses and blah, 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 and that, myth, that mess of things, they always seem to bring up the love. The love. Okay, you listen. You. You know who I'm talking to. You want to tell me that you claim that you're saved. You came to the Lord. Not because I was afraid or knew that I was... No, no. I came to the Lord because of the love that He has for me. I didn't come... There was no... There's no fear in love. You're, you think you're saved, huh? When you when you glorify easy, a sleazy believism, you don't rightly divide the word of truth. But but see what they do is, okay, they'll bring up something. Well, well that's uh, in the Old Testament. Oh, so you rightly divide the word of truth, huh? Oh, so since you rightly divide the word of truth, then you realize that the Sermon on the Mount doctrinally is not for us today, right? Kill you. Oh, okay. So, okay. So you rightly divide the word of truth. So then you realize and know that uh, the Garden of Eden there was only works. It's, it's faith alone from beginning to end. It's, oh, for the love of. Here we go again. Oh, so you rightly divide the word of truth. So you realize that the scripture that plainly says that uh, salvation is different in the dispensation. It's faith alone from me. Oh, oh, dude. <laughs> dude. Dude. And you came to the Lord because of the love. You came sensually. In other words, sensually. Hmm. Yeah. 
I think perhaps maybe not, my friend. Anybody who says to you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on record, I've, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Um, someone who loves their sin and loves this world is abhorred, um, or abhors, I should say, is horrified by the thought of required brokenness. And we are going to look at today, just a little, that what Christianity offers you is contrary to the scriptures in that most of Christianity, not all of it, but most of Christianity, about 8 out of 10 of the Christians you are going to meet, are warped in this deluded, um, brokenness-less, if that's a word, Christianity that is earthly, sensual, and devilish. And my, and my dear brother from another nation, you and I aren't going to get along, dear brother, but I still consider you a brother. Okay, you are neck you are neck deep in that stuff, son. You are. The company you keep shows a lot. I consider you my brother. We've tried to we've tried to talk a couple of times. It just doesn't seem to work out, does it? Especially when you're always from f looking for fault in me. <laughs> But that's, you know, that's whatever. I, I do consider you a brother. I, I really do. And you know who you are, who I'm talking about. Okay? You can feel free to email me. Okay? All right? But um, this, this whole thing, this whole thing of what Christianity is, you can make your little arguments about what Christianity might have been. It doesn't matter. What is it now? And you have to remember, too, dear people, that Christianity is going to be the religion of during the time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be Catholicism, Brad. What do you think Christianity is, man? Those of you who get left behind, you watch. That man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to go into that third rebuilt temple and say, I am. Oh, I bet you he's going to be calling everybody a Christian. You'll see, those of you who get left behind. But to circumvent necessary brokenness of self is contrary to the Scripture and is another gospel and is another Jesus. Okay? All right? This is imperative. This is imperative. Because it is what... I don't know about y'all, but this is what I'm encountering quite a bit. Quite a bit. All right? True brokenness of self. In order to be born again, you have to die. In order for something new to begin, something old has to die. This is why so many people uh, like to protest. Well, you don't need to be really born again. And those who have a slight knowledge, they do things, well, it's only in John and Peter. So being born again is only for the Jews. <laughs> And they, and they come up with the, well, Paul never talks about it. Oh, so you rightly divide the word of truth? <laughs> okay. Oh, and, uh, and how, what was salvation in the Garden of Eden? Oh, by faith, by grace through faith. Oh, uh, here we go again. You talk about cherry picking when it suits you. When it suits you. I'm not surprised anymore about these things. I, I really am not. 
Yeah, I really am not. It's just, it just gets so wearisome. Weary some. Not tired. Wearisome. I know I'm mispronouncing that. I'll work on that. Thank you. Okay. Get weary of it, man. I don't know about you. You know, and also the other end of that spectrum is what? Works salvationists such as the Catholics and the German Catholics, the Lutherans and stuff like that. Even, even some of the Baptists, uh, virtually all the Charismatics, okay, <laughs> virtually all the Charismatics, um, Calvinists, they're, they're, they're crazy. <laughs> okay, okay. And of course, the sleazy believists, of course, you know. But in, in Psalm 7, Verses 11 on to the close. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Now see, one of these types of Christians would come to this as like, well, that's in the Old Testament. <laughs> okay. Okay. Again, so then you recognize that the Sermon on the Mount is not doctrine for us today? That's heresy! Oh, oh people. Oh, people. Oh, and, and, and a really good one. And you do realize that the scriptures say that there's going to be the redemption of the... We're going through the great tribulation! Oh, See, they come up with that, well, that's in the Old Testament to defend themselves. Not rightly dividing the word of truth. Because you throw that at them. Throw it at them! They say, you know, uh, one of these uh, just believe and receive Christians or whatnot. Or one of these non-denominational half-wit twits. You know, they go, well, that's the Old Testament. Throw that at them. Do it! See what happens. <laughs> Be careful though, because you can run and you might run into someone who dumbfounds you like I can't believe this person is that willfully ignorant. And you just can kind of stand there shocked, speechless speechless, it's like, Lord, what can I say to this person? <laughs> Walk off. Okay. Want to no, you don't want to drive. Okay, fine. You know? <laughs> but they, they come up, well, it's all about love today. Love, 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 love. Yeah. yeah. Um, but go back to Jude really quick. Okay, go back to Jude real quick. Well, of all things I need to see. <laughs> I need to see stuff like that. You know? I didn't come because I was afraid. It must have been horrible for you. You didn't need to come that way. You're not saved. Go away! <laughs> Go away! You're a thief and a robber. You're trying to climb up some other way. You've had some sensual experience. Now you think you're saved. Well, you are a Christian. Uh, back in Jude, verse 22 and 23. And some have compassion, making a difference. Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Okay. <clears throat> Romans chapter 2. Verses, oh, that's verses 4 on to verse 11. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering? Not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Turning, yes. Turning. And you look up the first appearance of repent, repentance, that kind of stuff. In Genesis, there's an aspect of sorrow with it. Okay? The Lord repented because he had made man. Not that God's a sinner, God forbid. No, he regretted, he was sorry that he made man because how man had corrupted his way on the earth. 
He repented of it, meaning that he turned from it in that way, not that he was a sinner at all. God forbid. No. Repentance is a turning, but you look at the very first appearance of it, there is an aspect of sorrow with it. And see, that's what Christianity wants to circumvent, likes to avoid, and just get right to the good stuff. Like I keep telling you, it has to be a suffering before it can become a glory. It has to hurt before it can be made better. You gotta be broken in order to be fixed. <clears throat> but after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Paul never talked about wrath. Are you kidding me? Now you probably read our Bible, which doesn't even talk about wrath, right? Paul talked about the wrath of God. Paul talked about the fear of God. Okay? Oh, you, you rightly divide the word of truth, huh? Huh? Oh, oh, oh it's uh, once, uh, once saved, always saved, uh, by grace through faith from the very beginning? <laughs> what do you read, dear Abby? <clears throat> but after thy hardness and impenitent, impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance and law and well doing seeking glory uh, to them who by patient continuance in well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life but unto them that are contentious I'm Jimmy can I just believe I'm elect where are you going to send them to when you give them the gospel it's like here I'm going to send them to the Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures you idiot. I say that with kindness. Okay? But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Ooh, all that epistles talking about the wrath of God. Imagine that. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Paul and epistles, doctrine specifically for us today, to the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, and there is none good but who? What? God. To the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. See, Christianity, and, and I, I see this, I, I see this all the time with the stuff that, unfortunately, I, I have to look through sometimes. Um, Christianity is all about this lovey, squishy, uh, Splenda, sweet, bro hug, bear hug, filth. It's not the Lord. A lot of you Christians are believing on a Christ that is not the Christ of the authorized scripture. Okay? That's why I say to you, dear brother, which one? Which Christ? Well, there is only one Christ. You're right. You're right. There is only one Christ. That is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You are right. However, look at look out there. There are many Christs out there today. Like John says, now are there many antichrists against that one true Christ? Yes. So when you say well, to be a Christian is a follower to, is to be a follower of Christ. Which one? 
Well, the Christ of the Bible. Which Bible? The King James. Th this is the scriptures, buddy. You see, we need to be distinct, brethren. Haven't you figured this out? What's what is it with you? Why can't you figure this one out? I don't get it. I truly do not get it. Have you not seen the gray, bland, blah that Satan has done of making everything acceptable? There is no black or white, only shades of gray, and that has gone over into Christianity. And we as saints need to be the turd in the punch bowl, as it were. Bad analogy, but you, that, that gets the point across, doesn't it? We need to be the monkey in the wrench, the fly in the ointment, the pain in the buttocks. But no. No, distinction. See, when you seek to do away with distinction, what happens? Then nothing is distinct, is it? Anything is fair game. Have you ever wasted, basically wasted your time for almost 30 minutes trying to explain the difference between this Christian and that Christian, and in the moment, that person is lost like a deer in the headlights? We are called to be a peculiar people, brother, sister. Now, granted, we can be peculiar by just being, you know, just being mankind, yes. But see, our otherness comes from one who is other. But see, Christianity, which is sensual, all sensual, is common. And there is the common salvation. Meaning that it's available to all. Yes, it is. But see, when you blur and blah everything, then nothing is distinct, is it? Prove me wrong. And then, with this false love that Christianity preaches to you, God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will whet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death, and the wages of sin is death. Instruments of death. Over an excess of alcohol, drugs, TV, internet, that kind of stuff, in excess. Just some examples. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Protestant. The whore refers to anything outside of herself as protestants. Or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Isn't it funny that these... Christians that supposedly are branches of protest of the Protestants, what are they protesting? If anything, they're protesting the saints of the Church of God and the authorized version of the Scriptures. And it seems, and I, I, I have, I've seen quite a bit with the King James Bible believing Christians as well, um, way too reminiscent of almost a Catholic-esque mentality. Distinction. Distinction. Distinction, brethren. We need distinction. Distinction has been thrown out the window, especially here in America. We need Have you ever watched some of these um, sleazy believers live streams? 
Oh, uh, brother, my, uh, I, I already knew about the guy, and I'm not touching him with a 10-foot pole. But um, he is so carnal, so worldly. He, it's this, guy, this one guy, and he's got two ladies, excuse me, two females on his stream with him. Those of you who know, you know who I'm talking about now. That, that guy is so wicked, so filthy, so vomitous, so grotesque, okay? That, that guy is bad. Even my, my greatest enemy is like, dude, this guy is bad. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. But worldly, carnal, fleshly, filthy communication out of their mouth, man, okay? What do they persecute? They persecute the distinct church of God. Saints. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity, and hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood. How in Christianity is today, brethren. He made a pit and digged it, and has fallen into the ditch which he made, his mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. 1 Corinthians 15. I'm going to demonstrate to you that death to self there must come first death before a new creature can come. You have to be broken first, dear friend. If you claim, <laughs> if you claim that you have come to the Lord in any other way except the way of the cross, you are a thief and a robber. You have booted the door, and the door is Jesus Christ, genius. And you have booted the door out of the way, and you have climbed up some other way. Read John chapter 10. You are a thief and a robber. You are to try, you are trying, attempting to steal away from the Lord what he is freely offering to you. The problem is for you is that he has a very specific way. And see, right there. Lord, our Lord is specific. And when you try to circumvent that specific way, then anything is fair game. Then nothing is specific. Then. Hmm? Well, well, Brad, I'm glad that way, that your way works for you. But I have a different way. Uh, Jesus Christ, he, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Here, let me, let me really get you riled up. Let me really get that flesh up, up at you. When it comes to this argument, somebody's wrong. You know what a proud, unregenerate person hates to hear? It's your fault. You're wrong. Somebody's wrong on this. The Lord is right. We are wrong. But see, the Lord has made it plain, a specific way to obtain his salvation. And that is the way of the cross. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 on to verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 on to verse 17. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Now, virtually all Christians will with their lips, will with their lips confess that there, there is a resurrection of the dead. But see, ye shall know them by their fruits. Okay? Ye shall know them by their fruits. Are they living, walking that reality of a coming resurrection of the dead? This is actually a little bit easier to spot than other things because um, of the level of carnality in them. 
Okay, we all make mistakes. Nobody is perfect, uh, except some of the. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. But <laughs> never mind. I'm gonna take take a dig at one of my <coughs> favorite persons. But um, by the level of their carnality, okay. Now you can ask, well, what if that's a brother or a sister just messed up? Well, again. The fruit of chastisement that yieldeth the peaceable fruits of righteousness when a brother or sister receives chastisement from the Lord. You and I do not visually see the actual, maybe we do, <laughs> it sometimes depends, but we might not see the actual physical or whatever emotional, mental, spiritual chastisement that is happening then and thereof. But the outcome of that chastening that yieldeth the peaceable fruits of righteousness, that is observable. Okay? That is observable. And you know what? Not one of these fakes out there can fake that. They can't. They always blow it. They always shoot themselves in the foot. Okay. I remember <laughs> this is a young guy who uh, who got caught. Uh, obviously, and he's not saved. But um, uh, he, he, he gave somebody a, um, in a comment or an email. It was a comment. It's like, I repented last night and I'm saved now. And blah, blah, blah. And he goes on and keeps doing the same exact thing. <laughs> Boy. Quit sniffing the glue. Get away from eating the paint chips, okay? Okay? But by their fruits. Like I said, we can't visually see the chastisement at the moment. But the results thereof, of godly chastisement, we can see. We can see. Okay? So a lot of these Christians, and, and this is, I mean, and I've, I've experienced this lots of times. They're Christian. Okay, I'm supposed to believe that Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again, third day according to the scriptures, and that there's going to be a resurrection. Talk to them about that. Make the resurrection the focal point. With a lot of these Christians, they'll come out. They don't believe in the resurrection of the dead. If they believed in the resurrection of the dead, it would reflect in their life. And see, some of the devils can mimic this to a point, but remember, as you read in the book of Exodus, the magicians were what? The blood, frogs, and uh, there was at the lice there. Oh, the rods, the fr uh, blood, and frogs. And I don't know if any of you have had frog legs, man. They're really good. <laughs> but anyway, but the magicians of Egypt were able to mimic up to three things. But when it came to making dust, lice, and you roll that around in your head, the scriptures say that the dust became lice. Dust. What is dust? Dirt. Okay? Form thereof. And it became uh, mites or lice. Lice are microscopic little bugs. Some of them look like crabs. Some of them are, I mean, under a microscope. So, inanimate thing became life, a living thing. The magicians of Egypt couldn't do that. That's why it takes time. That's why it takes time. You have to observe some of these people. It takes time. And most of the time, comes to this resurrection of the dead. They profess with their mouth, but their heart belongs to themselves. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is vain, is also vain. Because the sleazy believeth, what 
is their, what do they base themselves off of? Their own belief. Hey, Mr. Sunken Eye, that's what it is with you guys. It's your belief. Okay? I would be a little bit less on y'all if you would at least, well, I believe on the resurrection that he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. No, every single one of them, every single one of them, you circle it down to them, it's always about their belief. Which is what's being promulgated around in my town. The non-denominational, the Catholics are over there. You know, that, that's the mother of harlots. But, you know, that's what's being promulgated around here. Their belief. Them Selves. Yay. And we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet dead, you ye are yet in your sins. Hmm. So the resurrection of Christ is something new. Behold, I do a new thing, the resurrection of the death of from the dead. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 10 unto the close. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. See, if Christ isn't raised, you are in your sins. And Christ died, it's buried, and rose again. The third day according to the scriptures. Came back to life, so to speak. Right? So, right there. Death, burial, and resurrection see that okay you see that and for you and I to be one with Christ to be saved we have to die to us that we are a good person that we were worth dying for that you know oh I'm not that bad that's we have to die to ourselves. and see Christianity don't like that. Not at all. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 10 unto the close. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. And see, a lot of these people, while well, you're being too extreme, you're, you're talking a life about of misery. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. New life, new creature. See, when see, you boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way, you're not a new creature. You're a thief and a robber. You are only a new creature when the Lord dwells within you. That's what makes you a new creature. So many Christians, they have themselves a changed life, sir. You need to distinguish. Yes, a change will come from a result of being made a new creature. How do you become a new creature? How do you become a new creature? Because you say you are? No. The way of the cross. Okay? Within the entirety of the New Testament, this principle of dying first, to be made new again. You gotta, you gotta be broken before you can be fixed, pal. And for you to say to me that you didn't go that way, but yet you're saved, you ain't saved. You're not saved. It's contrary to Scripture. Okay? You must be born again. Well, Paul didn't say that. You're right, he didn't say born again. But he describes it in beautiful detail. Okay? 
He, it's like, it's, that's the same argument. Well, Jesus never said, I am God. You're right. He didn't. He said, I am. That's all he needed to say. Okay? It's the same argument. No, Jesus Christ never said, I am God. You're right. He didn't need to. He said, I am. And the Jews wanted to pelt him with stones. Paul does not say, being born again. But, dude, he talks about it in depth. He describes it in the minute detail of being dead to yourself that you can be raised a new creature in Christ. And you circumvent that? You're not saved. Period. Period. You're not saved. You circumvent that, like this we see believers do. You circumvent that. You're a thief and a robber, you're not saved. Okay? You're not saved if you go up some other way. The way of the cross is supposed to be painful to you before it becomes a glory. But you know what? Some of the a lot of these tough guys, they say they're so tough, but yet they don't want to deal with the most painful thing of all, death to themselves. Haven't you ever thought about that? About how some of these guys are so, you know, like so brave and you can do things to them and they don't get hurt, but yet they hear this, uh, unless the Lord save you, you're going to hell, and gnash on you with their teeth. Isn't that something? For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. Being other peculiar people, being not conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Our brother from New Jersey was telling us uh, the last time we spoke about, you know, how he's, you know, describes how because of his life and walk with Christ, how he's different, you know, and it's not because he's trying, it's just he's living according to the scripture, and because the Lord lives within him, he is a totally new creature and different than that. Okay? And any saint is. You see, Christian that boots the door and climbs up some other way. See, a, what makes you a new creature there, sir, lady or whatever you are um, what makes you a new creature is not you changing anything what makes you a new creature is the Lord in you that's what makes you a new creature we're going to look at that now let's continue for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest, manifest in our mortal flesh so then death worketh in us but life in you because of the example you are seeing of the brethren dying to this willing to be the outcast because we want to live according to this while Christianity wants to mingle in with it. Distinction, brethren. We have the same spirit of faith. We having the same spirit of, of faith Note that lowercase s there, that imparted spirit, okay, of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes. For the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man, the hidden man of the heart, the inward man, is renewed day by day. Be not transformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You do a screen. Hey, brother, from overseas, my dear young brother, son. 
Here's, here's one for you. Do, do your own study on renew. Renewal and all the variations on that. that that'll help you, son, out there with them people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, and also that'll help you, too, in um, being able to spot the counterfeit. Really well. Trust me. Okay? <clears throat> for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. If we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. Okay? Okay? That's what that's talking about. Okay? Well, we look not at the things which are seen. And that's what Christianity wants. They want you to focus on now. We're supposed to be eternally minded. We're not supposed to be oblivious to now. No, we're not. But this is not it. But Christianity has made this it. <laughs> Look at some of these sleazy believers, live streamers. I rest my case. Listen to them if you can stomach it. Okay? I mean, you talk about being made ill. All right? It's like, how could anyone, how could anyone tolerate listening to these people? You know? It's so, you know, at least, at least Mr. Sunk and I, he, he can at least be a little bit more conversive and at least put on a good facade rather than that, that one idiot with the two girls. Okay, that, that guy's terrible. That guy, I don't know how. I do. I don't know how anyone in their right mind could think that man's a safe man. I don't understand. I do. I do. But it's like, dude, you listen to that guy talk. It's like, Ugh. I'm not going to tell you his name. That, that, don't want. That's what those types of people want. They want the notoriety. They want the publicity. That's what they want. Don't give it to them. Unless you have to. Okay? Unless you have to. I don't have to. Not yet, anyway. Okay? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not on the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. Temporal. Right here, being eternally minded. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Hence, Christianity is temporal. Sensual! Where the faith that was once delivered unto the saints is eternal. Oh, it sure can hide itself quite well, can it? Sure can. Sure can. Okay? All right. Now, also, let's go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 24 under the close. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. The people, the body of Christ, that is the church, not a building. Okay? Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Mm -hmm. And he talks about that in Ephesians, uh, throughout Scripture, actually. Uh, also, the uh, look on this channel here about rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Talk about that in depth. All right? Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his Christians. His saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And Jesus is our hope. He is our glory. He is our life. He is our resurrection. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, no man cometh unto the Father but by him. Christ in you. Well, I, I thought I was sealed with the Holy Ghost. You are if you're saved. And the Lord is that spirit. See, God is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Not this satanic, blasphemous, toilet paper, vomitous, uh, uh, putrid, pus-filled bag of filth. Trinity, which incidentally, 
99% of Christians are? Hmm. Go figure. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, fear the Lord, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That's not sinlessly perfect either. Read the book of Galatians. Please, people, read the book of Galatians. Okay? All right? Perfect. Right in your heart. Okay? Which is broken and contrite. That's a perfect heart. Broken and contrite and right with the Lord. Okay? Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Striving. Striving. That's a, that's a good one for the uh, for description. Striving. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's read verses 36 on to verse 39. Now, this is context talking about the actual resurrection of the dead. You know, what body and stuff like that. Yes. But see... What is being talked about is, before something new has to come, something old has to die. People don't want to deal with that. They want their cake and eat it too. I get that. But when Christians want to avoid it, just get it out of the way. Dude, you're, 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 you're believing on another gospel and another Jesus. You're not believing the true gospel nor on the true Jesus Christ. Brother, which one? Which one? And you try not to be distinct. You are just like everyone else. And we, saints, brother, we are supposed to be a peculiar people. you brother being peculiar how are you being that example unto those people that you uh, uh, consort with how and my dear sweet brother look what fish was in that pond that we both know of And you know as well as I do that there are those out there who think that idiot is a saved man. First Corinthians chapter 15 verses 36 on to verse 39. Thou fool! Who says in his heart there is no God. Now this context? This is talking about the resurrection. Yes it is. But People, come on, this is this is not some bold simplicity. That which thou sowest is not quickened, made alive, except it die. <laughs> I can turn this off right now, and that'll be it. Except it die. Okay. Alright. It's not enough to have a change. What brings about the change, brother? What is it? Huh? Shut up with the change life thing. First mention being a new creature. A new creature. Okay? Start there. New creature. Because as we talked about, I believe, in the, in the previous video, that so many people have changed lives. But is that change coming from being a new creature? See, you, you, you leave that out. You leave that out about a new creature. Well, well, I'll, okay, so I do what you guys do, and I'll, I can change my life, yeah. But is that change being come, uh, coming from being a new creature, Christ in you, the hope of glory? See, see you, you leave that part out of it, man. You leave that part out of it. And that opens the gates for all kinds of trouble and also for a whole lot of coadjutors to come in. Okay? His word. Okay? Verse 36 again. 
Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Excuse me. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another of flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. Okay? We brought that up and we read that in there because of the context. It's talking about the resurrection. But see, at its point, at its base, in order for us to get our new body, we have to die. In order for us to uh, be saved of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to go the way of the cross, which he ordained, which he chose, which is first, de first death to us. Okay? This, this is so simple to understand, and that is why the enemy goes to great lengths to pervert it. Because it's real simple. Uh, these atheists, they get that. It's like, okay, I'm going to have to die to myself. That means that sin that I love so much, I, I should put that away. The life of sin that I'm living, God doesn't want that for me. Okay? You don't have to give that up to be saved. We've covered that a myriad of times. What you are turning away from is you are your own God. That's it. And see, again, you circumvent that, you are still acting as your own God. You're choosing to save yourself by your own belief. Or you're choosing to save yourself because you ate Christ or some nonsense. This principle of death before new life, okay, is very simple. So simple that Virtually anybody can understand that. And that's why it is so hated, so attacked, and so rejected, especially by Christianity, because it is so simple. But what is the difficult part is that it hurts. It hurts. And it's supposed to. And this avoidance, have you ever noticed this? This avoidance of pain. Now, granted, nobody likes pain. If you do, you got some issues, and you might want to go to the Lord's like, Lord, I got this weird fetish. Okay, but nobody likes pain, but there are tolerable states of pain. Okay, our dear, our dear beloved, my best friend Alexander Hartley, even after his hip surgery, still has pain. Our brother from uh, New Jersey, he has pain. Our brother from North Dakota, oh, the Jesuits are just. Uh, tossing that poor brother around with going this way, that way, and then here our poor brother, he can't even, he can barely move his arm with the things poking through his muscles and stuff like that. Pain every single solitary day. Okay? He ain't whining about it. For our light affliction, okay, for our light Affliction, okay, remember, remember that what we just read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And it's so interesting that nowadays, with this avoidance of pain, that people will go to the doctor and get, you know, for example, um, legalized marijuana. Someone, because they're sad or depressed, can go and get a prescription for, mar for legalized marijuana. Someone has a runny buttocks, and they go to the doctor, and they give them, give them an antibiotic. Or, so. or someone cuts themselves, they get uh, prescribed, uh, not Vicodin, but the other one that's common that they give out. Okay, this constant avoidance of pain. Okay? You know... The body of man is quite durable. <laughs> look, look at the, the, the stuff that I did to it, and it's not working at its full capacity, no, but it's, it's still functioning. The body of mankind is very durable. And with all the abuse we put to it, 
Most of the time, brethren, people, there's a lot of discomfort that we can endure. Now, granted, you enduring discomfort can make it very uncomfortable for those around you. you got to remember that. You know, it's like, well, I can bear this pain. It's like, yeah, but you are, be are becoming unbearable. <laughs> you know, any of you people who are married, you know what I'm talking about. You know, your wife or your husband's in pain that day or whatever, and he's, he's just, you know, he or she's just sitting there dealing with it, and they're kind of a little cranky. And it's, you know, it's like, I can bear this discomfort. And you're like, well, I'm glad you can, but yeah, I love you. You're being very unbearable yourself. <laughs> but yes, it, the avoidance of this pain thing, it, it's, it's, very, it's very telling. It's very telling. And see, that kind of ideology, the avoidance of the pain of the pricking, or the cutting of the heart that the scriptures give. Why, that's why people like to avoid Romans chapter 1, 2, and the uh, earlier parts of Romans chapter 3. But see, because they work for Satan, they know that they can get in there and deceive people. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. You say to me that you didn't come to the Lord the same way that I did. Or any saved saint? Look at me. You're not saved. You're not saved. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Shed his blood on the cross, okay? Pay for your sins. In order for you to be saved of the Lord, you have to go the way of death. You have to die to yourself. I know that hurts. I get that. Okay? But see, you avoiding it isn't working. You avoiding it shows, shows that you are following another Jesus, another gospel. You're not saved, sir, lady, whatever you are. You're not saved. You haven't gone the way of the cross. You haven't gone the way of brokenness, which our Lord requires. Oh, that, that sets them off. Oh, you're saying there's a requirement. Yeah, yeah. Go, go run along with the rest of your uh, sisters from the horror mystery Babylon. Yeah, yeah. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Verses 3 under verse 6. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized, identified into Christ, were baptized, identified into his death. Death. There's that thing of death again. Mm. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism <laughs> into death. See, there... You, you can't escape this. Even though you think you are because you just believe and receive. You, you can't escape this. True salvation requires death. And, you know, you, you can say that I'm morose when I say that. No, you probably don't read the scriptures, do you? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. <coughs> Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Death, new life. Broken, contrite, fear. Save me, new creature. This is that easy to understand. That's why Satan hates it. They say, oh, I can't understand the King James. Yeah, you can. 
Yeah, you can. The deeper things you can, we've already covered that. That's true. But see, you lost people and you false converts can understand enough to know that um, maybe what you're doing doesn't really save you, does it? Or maybe you're one of the worst ones where you think because you just believed and received that you are saved and yet there's no distinction between you and this world. And see, when you try to be distinct out of your own accord, what happens? You fall in line of being just like anyone else who wants to be different. See, that newness, that change has to come from the Lord, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You can only, you can, dude, you can only play with it for so long before you, before you're discovered as a fake or at least to yourself where you'd be like, hmm, maybe I ought to reconsider, you know? Or are you that far gone? Most of you probably are. You know? Sad, man. For if, if, so glad if, if, for if we had been planted together in the likeness of his death, the death of the cross, I am not of the world. Okay? This is, this is in rocket science. This is not brain surgery. This is real easy. That's why so many hate it. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall, also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Let's read verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. And here's the perversion of that. Someone says that you just believe, therefore you're free. But see, freed from sin, meaning the consequences thereof, Meaning that you can go ahead and get right into it and not have to worry about it. That's the deception. That's the devilment of what Christianity has done. And why you want to be part of the, you know, why you want to compare yourself with those that compare themselves, I don't get it. You know, I don't get it. I really don't. I really don't. I really don't, okay? I, I, I truly, truly do not. Go back now to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 45 on to verse 50. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Now, put the, pull this around in your head a little bit. Spirit and soul are mentioned. Adam was made out of what? Dirt. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. So, Adam, Adam in the Garden of Eden, uh, Garden of Eve, the last Adam, our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Uh, body. Okay? <laughs> okay? Body, spirit, soul, body. Get it? Uh-huh. Okay. The first man of the earth, the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. They are of the world, they speak of the world, therefore the world heareth them. Okay? We are of God. Those who are of God hear us. Uh, the spirits identify. 
you know, Christianity speaks of the world. That's why the world hears them. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God there is spiritual. Okay? Spiritual. Okay? Spiritual. You're not saved because you think you are. You're not saved because you say you are. You're saved because the Lord saved you and He sealed you. Okay? You're saved because He saved you, cleansed you. And proof of that is that He lives within you. Nothing of your own doing. Okay? So when you got these people who come around, you believe and receive. That's flesh and blood. And flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, dear friend. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. John. Oh yeah. John chapter 3. <laughs> These people. <laughs> These people. Only the Jews needed to be born again. People, people actually argue that. It's, it's, that, that, that one, that, that sets me off, by the way. I, I, I will not be nice to you. If you, I mean, if you're ignorant, that'll be, dis, that'll be discerned quite readily, hopefully. But if you're one of these guys, like the sleazy, I'll, I'll go off on you. Uh, <laughs> my name's Brad, not Karen. Okay, that, that, there's no, there's no place for that stupidity. There's no place for that. If you don't know better, that's different. We'll talk. You know better and don't want to believe it? Then that's stupid. John chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 12. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. I think um, Nicodemus needed to wipe off his nose a little. I like Nicodemus. I think Nicodemus is up there waiting for us. I do believe that. But his, his premise at, fir at first was kind of pharisaical, obviously. But like I said, uh, I think Nicodemus, I, I believe he's up there as well. Okay? Of course. Jesus answered, and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. He's talking about spiritual. Okay? Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water. That is signifying natural birth, not water baptism. You wicked Catholic, charismatic, water dog, Campbellite, uh, Robinite, whatever you want to call yourself. It's not talking about water baptism. It's talking about, you know, the woman's water breaks. Okay? That's what that's talking about. That's what he's talking about. All right. Except a man be born of water and of the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So, got to be born and the Lord himself has to be in you. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Oh, and so many people try to force their way into the, the spiritual of the kingdom of God. Don't they? But what's missing? They're not born again. They're, they haven't died. Verily, 
That which is born of the flesh is flesh. I said it that way purposely. Look at the sensual Christianity. Look at it. Look at the sensual Christianity, which is the King James Bible believing movement. Look at it. Look at it. You tell me that the modern King James Bible believing Christianity movement isn't anything now but a sensual mess. Look at it. And that which is born of the capital S spirit is lowercase s spirit. If this counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, refrain. For if you fight against it, you're fighting against God. That's totally Brad Eyes from Acts chapter 5. Okay? Hey, Christian. You sure you're a saved man? Saved one? You, you say to me, you didn't come the way I came, but yet you're saved. No, you're not. And somebody's wrong here. One of these ways is not the right way. Now, rightly divided, you read the scripture. This idea of death before new birth cannot be disputed. <laughs> I mean, they try all day. It cannot be. I mean, it really can't be. The scripture is right. In order for something new to begin, something old has to die. And when you circumvent that, there's no death. Hence, no new creature, dear friend. One of, one of these things is wrong. Either the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, or the faith that comes from the whore, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, and all her daughters. Someone's wrong here. I'll give you 50 guesses which one it is. And the first 49 don't count. Because when you don't want to face up and face death in order to become a new creature, you are your own God. And then there's no room for the true God in your life when you are your own God. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye, plural, must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself. I love this. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, how can these things be? How is this possible? I love this. Look at this. Jesus answered and said unto him, Oy vey, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? No, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Nicodemus, being a Pharisee, was well educated. He knew the Torah. He knew the scriptures, I'm sure, quite well. Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh, I say unto thee, excuse me, we speak that we do know, and testify what we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, being dead to yourself. How shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things, being born again? 
<laughs> oh, brother, you know, you've been uh, you've been in front of people. I'm uh, addressing a certain brother. You know, you've been you've talked to the people, talked to them about dying to self, that there must be a death to self. You have just like us. Oh yeah. If I have told you of earthly things, dying to yourself, and ye believe not, I'm a good person. I don't. I, I'm not that bad. How shall ye believe? How can ye believe? Right? If I tell you of heavenly things, how can ye believe? Those of you who seek honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. I love that. <laughs> how shall ye believe? It says, how shall ye believe? Elsewhere he says, how can ye? How can ye believe? How shall ye believe? If you, if you can't accept that in order to be saved, first you've got to be broken... Um, okay, okay, you're obviously not there yet, <laughs> okay, see ya, give them a track and just, you know, like, Lord, break that person, that they may die to self, see, if you can't, my mother, you know what my mother couldn't get past, my mother, who's in hell? And this is why I, another reason why I hate this believe and receive thing. My mother could not give it over Romans 3.12. She couldn't get past it. They're all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. She couldn't get past that. She couldn't get past fact, the truth, that there ain't nobody good. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 16. Then we'll be done. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 16. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the lowercase s, spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God, capital S, the Spirit of God, capital S, that dwells within you. Okay? Okay? Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit, also lowercase s, one that is imparted, which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, Christianity, philosophy, whatever, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, and the Lord is that spirit, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Spiritual things, spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S Spirit of God. If you will not believe what the Lord tells you about earthly things, how in the wide world of sports entertainment are you ever going to believe of things pertaining unto heaven? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Uh, be interesting to see what that cross-dressing Calvinist has to say about that. <laughs> oh, incidentally, um, I've been accused of making that up. Um, I wish that were an exaggeration about the cross-dressing Calvinist. I wish that were an exaggeration. I wish that were. You can't make something up like that. Anyway. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. 
For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? We have the mind of Christ. All things I needed to see today. It's going to be it for this little video. Um, like, wow, man, you know. I didn't come to the Lord the same way you are, and I'm saved. It must have been horrible for you. Well, you guess what there? You're not saved. You didn't come the way of the cross. You didn't die to self. You have your cake and you. You're not saved, man. Death before new life. It's backed up by Scripture. And for you to come along preaching something contrary to that, you're preaching another gospel and another Jesus. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this. If you do, dear brethren, thank you for your prayers. Covet the, cover, I do covet the prayers of the saints. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm sorry for those of you, uh, but I didn't do a video yesterday. Like I said, I'm sick of the new normal, man. Anyway, thank you. Love you very much. Thank you for watching this if you do. Um, and hopefully see you again tomorrow. Hopefully. We'll see what happens. Bye-bye.